Good morning, everybody. Um, you're very welcome to this webinar um, that will give you an insight into a student's journey to becoming a CFP practitioner with LIA. Um, my name is Brian Dunphy, uh, postgraduate relationship, student relationship manager with LIA and a graduate of the postgraduate diploma in financial planning and a CFP professional. Uh, I'm delighted to be joined by Emer Kirk, CEO of the Financial Planning Standards Board Ireland and the lead lecturer of our postgraduate diploma in financial planning. And we're also joined by Kellyanne Quinn, who is a recent graduate of the programme. So a huge congratulations, Kellyanne, on your success in completing the postgraduate diploma in financial planning and also on achieving the esteemed uh, certified financial planner designation. So thank you both for joining us today and participating in this webinar. I encourage you, uh, those who have joined us, to participate by asking questions. So you'll see a Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. And we set aside some time at the end for any questions that you have. So feel free to pop them in there throughout the uh, webinar and we'll come to them at the end. So to start off, um, Emer, can I ask you to give us your thoughts on the current evolution of the financial landscape and the exciting opportunities and challenges that are currently being presented to financial advisors and in particular how the modules of the postgraduate diploma in financial planning might provide students with the skills and knowledge to navigate their way through uh, the dynamic industry successfully. Okay, Brian. Um, I, <laughs> that's uh, hopefully we 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 can we can shed some light on it. Um, and congratulations, Kellyanne. Um, so, look, it is a really exciting time to be involved in in financial planning in Ireland, and and there's a number of reasons for it. And um, I, you know, as Brian said, I'm CEO of of the Financial Planning Standards Board Ireland, and um, Financial Planning Standards Board globally, there's um, there's 213,000 um, certified financial planners um, globally. Uh, across 27 affiliates and uh, most would be in, in the United States um, with, with, with 95,000 um, CFPs in, in the US. But there is this move globally towards excellence in financial planning and the realization that that um, individuals need that, that guidance and, 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 and financial planning. But bringing it back, I suppose, to Ireland, um, we FPSB Ireland uh, commissioned a, a research paper last year um, and it, it's the uh, wealth demographics in Ireland and the future of, finan of financial planning in Ireland. And really what we were trying to look at there was, well, what are these wealth, what are the wealth demographics in Ireland? Everyone's talking about this first generation of, of wealth transfer um, is, 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 is in train or is about to happen. Um, in, it's, it's become, Ireland has become a, you know, a very wealthy country. Um, and we wanted to look at well, what does that mean for financial planners in the future? And there was some really interesting stuff came out of it just in terms of the demographics and the number of people that are going to be moving into that pre-retirement stage over the next uh, five, 10 years. You know, it's something like two or 300,000 people are going to need, um, are going to be moving into that area where, where the point of, of, of advice is going to be so important. Um, so, you know, I'm happy to share that, uh, Brian, if anyone wants to contact you about that, um, more, more than willing to, to, to share it with you. Um, you know, you've got that and you've got that coupled with the fact that we've had remarkable gains in, in mortality and, and, and longevity in the last number of years. We've the fourth highest life expectancy in Europe. Um, and really the challenge now is, is, is to try and, and accumulate enough and, uh, funds, you know, whether that's through traditional pensions or whether it's through personal wealth, business wealth, um, and to stretch those savings over that multi-decade time frame. So it's no longer a case that an individual is retiring at 65 and, you know, they have a 10, 15 year time horizon. In some cases, they'll, they'll have, you know, 20, 30, 40 year time horizon at that stage. And it's to try and uh, work with clients to stretch those, those um, savings. And we also have a lot of volatility in markets. Um, you know what, again, we're living permanently with that, with that level of uncertainty and, and, and the guidance that clients need. So it is a really complex landscape. And what the postgraduate diploma really does is, is it applies a very practical focus to, um, uh, to, to financial planning. So not only do you get the technical knowledge from the, the, um, the, the modules, um, you know, the investment management, the retirement planning, the risk management um, and, and, and the tax, but it's with all of these aspects, you're focusing on the practical ap application and also how they integrate together. So how they work together to, um, you know, to, to, to really formulate a, a financial plan for a client. So, you know, it's broken down into the various modules um, and those modules are stepping stones to, to, to build up your knowledge over time. 
Um, and I think unique to the postgrad in, in building that tech in building that technical knowledge um, is that focus uh, and that time that's given in in the modules um, on the practical application that you can apply to your day to day work so that it's not a case that you're waiting till the end of the module to be able to use this stuff like after every lecture, you should be thinking well actually how am I going to use that or I, that's a good idea I've just come across something similar and I can I can apply that from tomorrow morning to to, to what I'm doing. Um, I suppose Kelly Ann, you're you're just after finishing the, the 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 course, so you're probably in a better position than me to 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 even answer that. Um, so I might pass over yeah. to you then. Yeah, no, definitely what you said. It's not like you wake up one day and suddenly decide I'm going to give everybody a financial plan. Like yeah, you get bits of information that you're learning and you're applying it. You're, uh, you're tweaking up your own advice process, and then the flexibility of the course I find huge. Um, I was at the beginning, you know, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do full six modules, whether capability or if I had the time constraints. And so what I did, I actually applied for the investment module first. So that way I'd have the SAA de designation after that. So if I wasn't able to go further and I, I, I progressed, I, I enjoyed that, got the SAA and, and then kept going and, and did the full six modules. That's brilliant. Uh, listen, uh, thanks a million so far for giving us that insight. Like, I, I think you've already given us a, a flavour as to why people should consider this journey and, and starting it. And uh, Kellyanne, that's a very valid point. You, you can actually dip your toe in the water by doing one module and, and get a feel for yeah. the programme and, and, and just take your journey. Just took it piece by piece rather than looking at the whole thing that it was a mammoth task, like 18 months. I just took each module, each 12 weeks as, as they came, really. Brilliant. And look, for me as, as well, like I, I am a, a financial planner as well. And I think what certainly the program did for me is it, it gave me all the knowledge that I needed to enhance and, and offer a, a better offering to the consumer. Uh, but also it, it definitely gave me a lot more credibility with regards to consumers because they were, they're, they're very much recognizing what the CFP stands for and that I've gone to the level of, of advanced technical knowledge. And I, I think it also demonstrates, the program certainly demonstrates that financial advisors are committed to their own growth for the benefit of the consumer's financial well-being. So we're actually willing to go further to, to make sure that the consumer gets a better outcome every time they engage with a financial advisor. I, I don't know if you've ever heard this analogy. I, I use this analogy to, to talk to students because I talk to a lot of students who are considering this journey. And I describe the postgraduate diploma like this. If somebody drives a car, um, the level of knowledge that you have by being a QFA is fundamental because it's more knowledge than the other consumers who drive a car. And if your car breaks down, because you're QFA, you're able to ring a mechanic and say, I know exactly what's wrong with the car because you have all of that knowledge. But what the postgraduate diploma did for me is give me the skills to actually fix the car. So I can actually, I, I don't need to ring anybody. And, and that's the, the difference. So I, I just think it's a, it's, a very, it's a very simple way of me explaining, look, this is why I went to that level. Um, it's not that I can fix a car, it's just an analogy. So uh, don't ask me to, to fix your car if it breaks down. Um, so to look, move on uh, for, to the next point. Um, can I ask you, Kellyanne, right, as a graduate of the programme, can I ask you genuinely what motivated you to pursue the postgraduate diploma in financial yeah. planning with LIA? And also, did the programme meet your expectations in terms of content and depth of, of learning? Oh, yeah, it definitely did. And yeah, what motivated me is what you, you mentioned it there, that the awareness is building of the, the CFP designation between not just other professionals, but customers. And I wanted to be able to show people that I am using best practice. And also in putting that financial plan together, it, it's a tangible product that you can sit down with your clients and go through and use the cash flows at the heart of your projections. And I really wanted to be able to have the skills to do that as effectively as I could. Then, yeah, actually, the wealth of knowledge then when you're doing the postgrad, I mean, you've got your, you know, your lectures like Brian Grimes in actuary. James Skihan, and the, you know, he's renowned. I've been in the pensions industry 26 years and he's renowned. And actually, I already had the RPA designation and I wasn't very impressed when I signed up and I thought I had to do it again. And I thought, oh, I already have this. But yeah, what I had was a level seven. This was a level nine and it was different. And, you know, I really was worthwhile doing it at the level nine. And um, yeah, and then David Clancy in tax and 
then I know Emar. Yeah, I called on Emar for to give me a hand with mathematical equations, different times when things aren't working well. You've got so much support and uh, knowledge there from everyone. It's brilliant. Brilliant. Thanks a million for that. Um, and Emar, from a lecturer's perspective, you know, with, with regards to the support. Um, can you give an insight into to the journey that, or, or the support that students might expect? Yeah, I, I, I suppose the, 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 the lecturers all give students um, a huge amount of support and, and, and as much as support as, 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 as we can offer. It is done in an, in an online setting, but, you know, it, it, they, they, the lectures are all available um, uh, to, to, to answer questions. And, and, and I know that, that they're all available, at, you know, to, 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 to answer emails um, afterwards. But. I suppose just in terms of um, you know the approach that's taken by the lecturers is is um, and and um, one of the, the uh, structures that that is in place on on all of the modules is a mixture of um, this continu you know continuous assessment throughout the module. So and that and that's also a mixture of of exams and and assignments as well. So for somebody who's saying, "Gosh, I haven't done an exam in in you know in ten or twenty years or whatever," and and, and is worrying about it. You know, you are eased into it in that there will be some 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 exams, and um, but there's also a lot of um, there's there, there's there's also uh, you know a number of assignments in in each of the 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 um, modules where you'll you'll get time and you'll be coached along along the road um, uh, by the, the lecturers as to and, and you'll have time yourself to do that. And there's some group work as well and um, where you get to, uh, you know, get to experience experience that peer to peer learning, which is always really beneficial and, and, and gets great um gets great, get great feedback and, 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 and people get a lot from it. And um, not just learning from the lecture, but learning from the experiences of, of the others, because there's so many people who do this course who are so experienced in the in the industry and would be specialized some of them in, in in their own areas and possibly know you know a, a, a huge sometimes more than the lecturers in, in the specific areas you know like if they've been an investment manager for the last 20 years um you know they they they, uh, they have a huge huge level of of um experience but the the modules are also evolving as well to to um you know to facilitate um students and and, and to work with students so you know the the continuous assessment is, is assessments a, a, along the the modules are to first of all i suppose help the lecturers understand um the you know where students are at in terms of their understanding and um, it's also good from the students perspective to to you know to have a certain level of 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 um of your marks before you go into the final exam and know where you're at, and um, but it also, it, it, I suppose, the big thing is for, is is that the lecturers can can take the the results of of the, and um, the continuous assessments and adapt their learning or, or their the teaching as they need to. So you know you can focus on certain areas if if um or it may need to you know to go back and revise over different areas with with, with students. So it is um it it's it's um it's it's done so that students don't have the twelve weeks lectures and then all of a sudden you've got one big exam at the end of it and and, and that can be very off-putting for, for for a lot of a lot of um, people uh, starting back in after after being out of the education process for for a long time it's brilliant to hear um and I, I can echo what you're saying as well with regards to the support i know the education team in lia do actually engage with students throughout the the module so they're not alone on the 12 weeks they actually do touch point with them and, and check in to see you know have have they got all the support they need is there anything they want to address with the lecturer so it, it, there is a full team in the background as well supporting the students so with, with that team you know to continue this team i, I just share with you you know i talk to a lot of students with regards to starting their journey and there's two common questions that that are thrown at me and and fears that students might have and the first one is how will they manage the commitment from from a time perspective to take on a course like this and then secondly some of us mightn't have studied for some time i know certainly for me it was 15 years since i had last started studying a program um and it, it's hard to believe because i'm so young but it was 15 years since i had been in, in front of a, a class and um it, it's daunting and you have that fear in the back of your mind so you know the question is will they be able for this so kellyanne can you even give us an insight into you know how students might look at that yeah no it's exactly how i felt i was unsure and um if I would be able and then what happened with me was once it went online I felt okay I have time I wasn't sure if I'd have the time to travel to the lectures and then actually I once it went online though as well your lectures are recorded 
So there was some evenings, maybe I didn't get something or, you know, I was tired that I was able to play back those pieces of the lectures on a Saturday when I refresh your mind. And that re that really helped. Um, the continuous assessment is, is brilliant. It, 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 it keeps you focused the whole way through rather than leaving everything to the end and you're aware of, of where you should be. The peer to peer, the, those groups, they're there again, the support you get from each other the end when you're doing that final project you get a huge amount of knowledge from everyone else from where they're working you know at, at that time and then yeah I, it's and what, what you're learning though you said you can bring it back into your own work so it's not like you're sitting on a lecture one night you're learning something then you go off and you're not thinking about it you're, you're sitting in front of clients and things are popping into your head and bit by bit you're tweaking processes so it's not the same as just having to learn off reams of information that you, that you have to just go verbatim and put it in an exam. And um, I find as well, sometimes the recommended reading, I just downloaded an audio book and went for a walk and just let it play and listen, put it on in the car instead of just being at the desk the whole time studying. Yeah. And it's brilliant because uh, you, you touched on it. The recordings are invaluable with yeah. regards to the lectures. You know, the fact that we can actually listen to them on our phone while you're out walking, is it's great because it's part of your revision. You can actually use it as, as part of your study uh, preparation for exams. I know for me, right, I, I put my hands up as a man here. Um, I can't do two things at once, right? So I learned very quickly in the course, I can't read and listen at the same time. So my approach to the lectures and, and in particular them being online, it was really advantageous because there's no commute. I, I can actually dedicate more time to being prepared. So I would read a lot of the material the, the slides that the lecture would be going through in advance to make sure that on the night of the lecture I'm listening um, even though I mightn't have understood what I'm reading at least I haven't come to this raw and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it for the second time so it really gave me you know I was, I was on the money when it came to trying to digest what was being said and I also learned a lot about time management because look it's it, we, we, there's no point in hiding it we're all working and we also have other commitments you know there are other little bodies maybe knocking around in the house and you have other time commitments that you need to be uh you know committed to and then other life events happen and and I, you know i i don't mind sharing with anybody any ex my experience of the journey if they ever want to ask me how did you do things i'll share with you you know my experience but i i certainly decided that the night of the lecture for for each module was my night at school and I dedicated that night and I decided my approach was I'll be prepared. I'll have read the material. I'll go to the lecture and then I'll have a coffee and I'll go and do the additional homework on that night because it saved me having to try and find time later in the week to apply to the additional work that I needed to do. And I, if you do that, I found you stay on top of things week on week. And that really stands to you when you come to the continuous assessments. You, you really are. You've built on top of it. Um, Emer, is that your experience of, of students who are successful, who, who managed to get through this? Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 and it, it, it certainly is. And, uh, you know, it is it is trying to keep on top of things as you go. And, and, and as Kellyanne said there as well, you know, you, you say to yourself, when you've got this 12 week block that you're just going to, 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 to concentrate on. And, you know, there is light at the end of the tunnel then, you know, when, when, when you break it down like that. But just another um, point that Kellyanne made, I just want to, to um, uh, just focus on as well. And, and, and that's just, um, you know, the, the, the level that this course is at in terms of, of, of the skills that, that it, um, the, the skills that it develops for, 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 um, for financial planners. So you're not being, it, it, there, there is an element of it that it is technical knowledge that you are, you're being examined on the technical knowledge, but, but it takes it a step further. Um, and that's really a key, key differentiator um, with the completing the, 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 um, the postgraduate diploma in financial planning. So you're, you're, you're using that technical knowledge, but you're developing key skills like critical thinking, problem solving, effective communication, so that you're bringing all of that into, into the work. And that's really what differentiates it from the level seven and the level nine, that it's not just repeating per, you know, per bottom. Um, and I suppose as well, it's a key differentiator as well. If, if you know, if everyone's concerning themselves about AI and, and you know, are, are, are the robots going to replace us as financial planners? It does differentiate you from, from what they can do, because while you might be able to get an investment portfolio or you might be able to get, um, you know, uh, or some, some advice on a retirement planning from, uh, you know, an, 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 a bot or a, um, you know, a, 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 an AI solution, 
it's integrating the whole thing and, and dealing with the client behaviors more, more so than anything else and putting forward those solutions um, and rationalizing those solutions that you're, you're putting forward with the client. There are a lot of the key skills that, that, that um, are developed across the module. So it starts, you know, it, it, it's, it's, and, and actually, um, you know, one of the things the Financial Planning Standards Board has just issued an, an, an updated set of global financial planning standards, and they've added a new knowledge domain, which is the psychology of financial planning. And it's really interesting because um, there's actually very little to add to the likes of the postgraduate diploma in financial planning, I've, I've, you know, when, when we've mapped the two against each other, because it's already built into all of the modules. So it's not that it's it's standalone. Um, it's built into each of those modules from from day one that this is not just about technical knowledge, but this is about the practical application. It's about that developing that that those skill sets, those problem solving skill sets and that effective communication, because you can have the most fantastic financial plan. But if you don't have buy in from the client, it's really not going to be of any benefit to anyone. Um, and, 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 and I think that's really one of the. The, the, the key skills that's developed in, in, the, in the postgraduate diploma. Brilliant. Uh, and, and look, I think th this question that I'm going to ask is really relevant for you, Kellyanne, because myself and Eamor are graduates for a while now. I, I, I've been a graduate for a few years. Um, as as Eamor, you, you've graduated as well a few years ago. So we've both been practicing everything we learned for, for quite a number of years, and it's been invaluable to us as financial advisors. But for you, uh, can you share with us, you know, the, how the knowledge and skills that Emer's referred to from the program have been able to be directly applied to you in your professional financial planning world, and and what has it allowed you to do? Or is it... yeah, well, it's allowed. What it's given me confidence to completely change everything. I've actually um, believe in where I'm working now, and I've an application to Central Bank to go out on my own, and really that the the confidence of the postgrad behind me has, has allowed me to do that. I didn't I didn't realize I would change the way I wanted to work so much. And I was coming back in trying to implement these new ways of doing things and ideas. And not everybody was on board. So I thought, OK, right, I'll, I'll go do this myself. And then not only has it given me the confidence, but the level of support as well from other, you know, CFP professionals that I've spoken to and asked their advice and and then you know support from the LIA and the FSB Blanche Planning Standards Board um yeah so it, it's really changed everything for me really in the last six wow. months yeah that's amazing that's fantastic yeah. to hear and look list very best to look with it and, and I've no doubt it'll be a success um yeah and, and I'm really, very excited yeah yeah, yeah. brilliant um, Emer, that must be uh, great to hear from one of your students that to see how the program has changed a lot, given them a new direction um, from from a lecturer's point of view. Yeah, no, it's wonderful to see that. Um, and I suppose it's that implementation in practice. So, look, the best to look at the Kellyanne, and, and um, you know, I suppose down through the years, um, it has been a catalyst for a lot of people to 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 make that leap you know from from whether it's an institution or whether it's 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 a, you know a traditional brokerage to, to to set up on their own um but also as well it's it's been a real catalyst for 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 individuals within their own organizations maybe to change things and it might not radically change um you know but but they, they build it into their business over time um that it, it's not a case that it's 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 it's, it's a change overnight and, and you know, and then for those in larger organizations, um, you know, you can see that that it's it's helped progression through the firm, um, you know, and 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 you know, many management even within the the the, the institutions as well will take the course um, to help create those processes and policies that for for a team that they're a team of financial planners that they're managing, um, you know, to ensure that they they, they are they did um, you know that there is that client centric um, uh, financial planning approach with it within the firm. So. Um, no, it, it 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 is it is definitely a, um, has been a catalyst for change. Um, some radical like yourself there, Kellyanne, but uh, you know some more that it's 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 just um, just changing the way that they work with it within the, the the their current organizations. Listen, I think you, you've you've summed it up uh, really. The two of you with regards to why people should consider this program is it's not just it, it is incredible that you walk away with a, a very significant academic qualification. But it's it's about what does it give you, you know, and that for me is what I ask myself: What am I going to get from this program? 
and it's it's a phenomenal amount of knowledge and skills and, and a new a new perspective. Um, so look, lastly, before I move on to some of the questions, can I ask both of you, look, if you were to give any additional words of encouragement to the people on this webinar about if they're thinking about starting this journey um, or even just dipping their toe in the water with regards to the postgraduate programme or the modules, have you any advice that you would give them? Uh, I'll ask Kellyanne first. Yeah, it. look, if they're working in the industry, if they enjoy what they're doing, they're more capable than they think they are. And just just do it. Just start it and go for it and enjoy it. <laughs> Brilliant. And Emer. Yeah, look, like that, there, there, you know, there's never a good time to do these things. If you're waiting for the perfect time, it's not going to happen. But the course does give you that flexibility to to um, to do it. And, and I suppose you just, you know, another analogy um, uh just on, on, on it um you know when people ask like what's the difference between the the, the you know the QFA and, and and the um and the CFP I, I suppose the one analogy I would say it's it's like a jigsaw you know if, if you kind of got a 16 piece jigsaw or 24 piece jigsaw where you've got a, you're dealing with it for a client and um you're finding out exactly what it is that they need and you're putting that solution in place you know, when you have the CFP, you're talking about a hundred or a thousand piece jigsaws where you're getting all of the bits and pieces that the clients have. You're not just dealing with, um, you know, the assets and the income that they have. Um, you're dealing with their objectives, their goals. And it starts off as a massive jumble of, of pieces. And by the end of it, you know, you, you at the end of, of, of taking them through that financial plan and, and anyone who does the, the course will, will be taken through the, those steps. And, and, you know, in the integrated financial planning, which is module six, you will end up pulling all those pieces together, having the skill set to pull all those pieces together. And you'll have a beautiful picture for the client. And that's that thousand piece jigsaw that you never thought you'd get to the end of. Um, but it, it's 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 a really clear picture for the client. Um, and that's you know, that 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 is that is huge value both for you as a as a planner um, and for the clients that you're dealing with as well. Thank you so much for that. Um, I, I'll just give it an, another insight. I, I, it's hard to believe, but I've run a few marathons many years ago. And if you're thinking about running a marathon, you realize it's 26 miles and it's a long way. But how I did it, and I didn't run before I, I ran marathons, is I started with one mile. And I said to myself, if I can run one mile, I can run two. And eventually I built up to the point of if I got to two, I can go to four. And I aimed at those mini, mini goals. So if somebody's thinking about this journey, each module is 12 weeks. And the way you should look at it is it's continuous assessment. And they come at you maybe in week five and eight. There's your marathon goals that will lead you to the 26 miles. You will get to the finish because you're able to run that one mile, which is one week. So week on week. And actually, as you're running distances, you actually get stronger and you get better and you're able to sustain your runs for longer. And that's the exact same with the 12 week program. Um, you're actually able to build on it week on week. I touched on it. I dedicated one night to being at school. If you do that approach, you're, you're more than capable of, of doing it. And then it's a 12 week cycle. You get to take a break and you go and do crazily enough. You do another marathon. And it's, it's just about that commitment and realizing I can do it. And if you take that approach. So look, Emer and Kellyanne, thank you so much for you know sharing everything with us this morning. Um, I'm sure you've given a lot of people a lot of food for thought with regards to making that next step. And you know, I, I think you know it's great to have the opportunity to hear from a lecturer and from students and the three of us having been through the program, you know, you're getting a real perspective of um, we've walked that walk and, and here we are still surviving and we're still here. And Kellyanne is about to go on a, a fabulous venture, which is great to hear. So look, I, there are a few questions. Um, I'm just going to, if you can bear with me, um, just throw them at you with regards to, you might even contribute here. What somebody has asked, does the whole course have to be completed in 18 months? Um, I'll, I'll answer that from an LIA perspective, no. You can actually complete the journey over whatever time frame you like. And this is the important thing. It is structured that you can complete it in 18 months because there's two modules per semester that you can actually complete in that cycle. But a lot of students do one at a time. Others start out with two and for life reasons, drop to do one and then come back and do two. You can actually manage it in whatever cycle you wish. The only thing you need to be cognizant of is module six can only be completed once you've either completed the other five or are completing 
your other modules. Um, because as Emer touched on, that's where the jigsaw all comes together um, and you, you, you draw on it. Kellyanne, did you complete it over 18 months? No, I did it two years because I did the investment one first and then um, I had two modules, then one module, then two modules. Yeah, so two, two years, exactly. Okay, brilliant. Um, and yeah, look, I, I think I took two and a half years and it was just personal life events that, that caused uh, and, and work commitments. So anything can be manageable over, over whatever time frame you want. And if you want to know more about that, please reach out to me. Um, can I ask, so the next question is, can we explain a bit more about how it can be done in by SIA or RPA bit by bit? Well, what that means is that the program is made up of six modules and some of the modules you get awarded a designation by completing them so the the modules are module one is principles and practices of financial planning module two is risk management and insurance planning module three is tax and estate planning module four is investment management module five is retirement planning and module six is integrated financial planning now out of those six three of them carry additional designations that you actually achieve while completing those modules along your journey so for the investment management module you get awarded the sia designation which is specialist investment advisor for the retirement planning module you get awarded the retirement planning advisor designation and for the financial for the risk management and insurance planning you get awarded the financial planning risk advisor designation the fpra so it, it gives you a sense of achievement while you're working towards that, that ultimate finish line. Um, and, you know, you don't have to wait to complete the course to get additional credibility to your name um, by adding those letters. Hopefully that answers that question. Um, Kellyanne, did you, you obviously achieved those designations. You had the RPA before you commenced? Had the RPA and then I got the SIA and then while I was completing the modules, yeah, I got the risk advisor. Excellent. As well, yeah. Excellent. And this, this last question, um, and then I, I will um, let people go because we've reached the, the 30 minute time from that I ask you to commit to for the webinar. Uh, there is the question from Gavin who's asked, is there any credit for doing this postgraduate certificate before you go for the postgraduate diploma? Um, some people may or may not be aware of this, but there is an embedded exit award that for those who don't wish to go on to complete the full six modules, you can complete three modules within the program and exit the program which means you complete the principles and practices of financial planning, the, tax, the investment management and the retirement planning modules, and you can exit with a postgraduate certificate. The only thing there is that you don't continue your journey towards being a CFP. Um, so it is something that you can get a level nine qualification and exit after three modules, but it stops your journey towards CFP. Um, but again, if anybody has any questions on that, feel free to reach out to me um, and I'd be happy to answer that. Um, so the last thing I want to do is just show you um, on screen my contact details for those of you who would like more information. Um, I'm going to put them on screen now. Um, Kellyanne and Emer, you might just confirm you can see on screen see my there. contact details. So look, for those who've joined the webinar, um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, my contact details are on there. Um, you can reach me by email or by phone, or you can go to our website and you can then avail of uh, contacting us through the website. Um, so look, I will thank you both for joining us. I really appreciate you sharing your time and, and insights into the next generation of CFPs who, who will come through the program. Um, and thank you. And I hope everybody got a lot of benefit from the from the, the webinar today and we look forward to seeing you on our next webinar we will have a further series of these webinars the next one will be in relation to the insurance the risk management and insurance planning where we'll be joined by brian grimes the lecturer on that program and then we will have a further webinar on the retirement planning module where james skihan will be joining us to have a discussion about that and on both of them we'll also have a former student of both of those lecturers joining us so look, thank you so much and um, I wish you the best for the rest of the day and, and thanks for joining us. Thanks. Thanks.